inside Sherwood Forest in Nottinghamshire, in England. Robin Hood and his merry band of men rested in their favorite spot beneath the greenwood tree. My stomach tells me it is time to eat, but my mind does not. Come, master, we will have fish and spiced wine. But we cannot dine until we have a strange guest to dine with us. A wealthy guest? Of course. What do you pay for the best? Say no more, master. I will go with much and will scar to find such a guest. I will have the banquet ready. Little John, Much, and Will Scarlet hid behind some trees to watch the road. They saw nothing but honest working people, clothesmen, swineherds, quarrymen, shepherds, and the like returning home from their hard day's work. They had been there for several hours. Evening was coming. It was getting cold and dark. Oh, I long for the fireside and a good warm meal. I had my voice yours. And I had mine, but duty is duty. We must wait a little longer. A fine rain began to fall. Let's go before we're soaked through. Wait, look down there. Someone on a horseback, perhaps our guest. The three outlaws watched a man ride toward them in fading light. He wore knight's clothes, though they were quite worn, and rode a worn-out horse. It was impossible to see the man's face. He hung his head and rested his chin on his chest. Is that a knight? If so, he's truly sorrowful. I know not which is sadder, his ragged clothes or his ragged horse. Let us bring him back to dine with us. If appearance is deceived, we all be richer before long. If not... Then this man needs a good meal and his horse a good rest. Little John stepped out from behind the tree and grabbed the nice horse by the bridle. Who are you and what do you wish of me? Welcome, sir, to the Greenwood, and greetings from my master. Who's your master? Robin Hood. I've heard much of this, Robin Hood. Now you shall get to meet him. You shall dine with us tonight in the Sherwood Forest. Little John began to lead Sir Richard by his horse into the forest. But I'm a poor man, poor in spirits and poor in wealth. That is no matter. Besides, you and your horse are cold and wet. We must also be hungry. Robin Hood will generously feed both horse and rider. Why, the matter is settled. Sir Richard hung his head, and Little John, Much, and Will Scarlet led him deeper and deeper into Sherwood Forest. Robin Hood stood to greet his men and his guest. Welcome to Sherwood Forest. The feast is spread, and my men will take care of your horse. I'm Sir Richard and Leah. You must be Robin Hood. Yes, you have heard of me. Yes. Some call me nice, but some call me a thief. Right now, I only know to call you Robin Hood. That is true enough. Now come dine with us. Robin Hood, Sir Richard, and Robin's men feasted on roast venison, eels boiled in oil, and roast boar. For dessert they had cheese, nuts, apples, plums, and peaches. They washed it all down with spiced wine. Sir Richard smiled at Robin Hood when he finished. Thank you, sir. I have not eaten so well in such a long time. I'm glad you enjoyed it. But it's our custom here that the guests pay for their meals. Now let's talk about your wealth. I shouldn't be ashamed, but I am. To tell you the truth, I have but ten shillings. The ten shillings is all Sir Richard of Leah has in the entire world. By your leave, Little John had best have a look all the same. Robin Hood nodded at Little John, who stood to perform his familiar ritual. He checked their guest's purse and cloak pockets in his saddlebags. Ten shillings was all he found. We were an honest knight, but how did you become so poor? No castle, no cattle? I had a year before, but then ill fell before me. Perhaps I can help you. Will you tell me more? <sighs> I have a son. He's just 20 years old, but last year he killed a man in the chest. My son is not to blame, but the man he killed was quite powerful. All the kings and kingsmen sent him into prison. I paid all the money I could for the ransom, but the sheriff still said it wasn't enough. I had to pay 400 pounds more. What did you do? I went to the St. Mary's Abbey in York. I knew the abbot there. A man ungodly, greedy, and proud. Yes, but wealthy. The abbey swims in gold. But didn't he give you the money? Is your son free? Yes and yes, but... Go on. The abbot's terms were harsh. You see, he gave me a year to repay the 400 pounds I owe. And if I didn't, he would take away everything I had. My castle, my land, my cattle. And now the year is up? Yes, and I cannot pay. When your men stopped me, I was on my way to St. Mary's to beg for a few months' grace. But I fear that I shall not win. You won't. I know the abbot very well. He does not have a kind bone in his body. Have you no friends to help you? When I was wealthy, I had many friends, but now that I'm poor, I have none. Many have come to me when they are in need of a friend. Well, go to the strong box and fetch four hundred pounds, a horse, some suit of armor, and some clothing for the morning. I can really speak my things, but tell me, when can I repay you? Twelve months under this greenwood tree. In a year, then, my friend. To sleep now. Everyone to sleep now. We have to get up early tomorrow to see our friend. But you cannot ride unattended. Who ever heard of a knight without a squire? You're right, little John. You shall take that job. Imagine a squire six feet tall. 
Everyone laughed as they found their sleeping places for the night. The next morning, under the greenwood tree, where Scarlet brought Sir Richard 400 pounds, new clothes, and a strong, handsome horse. Thank you. I will ride this horse with joy on my long journey. Sir Richard put the money in his saddlebags. Then he wrapped the good clothes in a bundle and put them on his horse. Will you not wear the fine clothes? I'd rather ride before the class. But why? I want to test the abbot's charity before I pay my debt. Just then, little John Robin Hood joined them. That is a wonderful idea. Let me put on some old ragged clothes, then we'll be off. <coughs> I will forever remember your kindness. Go, good and gentle knight! Ah! I look forward to seeing you at home once time. Okay! Bye! Taking place inside the abbey. Today is the day Sir Richard's land will become mine. And what a fine estate it is. Are you sure, Lord Abbot, that Sir Richard will be unable to pay his debt? Yes, I've been secretly watching all year and I know there's no money to repay me. I think... What is it? Speak up. I think you're wrong. Sir Richard, to seize his castle and his land and humble himself. Save your breath. Will he keep his day? He may arrive here yet. It is still an hour and until noon. He will not keep... He will not come, but never fear. We will find a way. A short while later at the abbey gate. Sir Richard and Little John tied their horses to an iron ring at the abbey wall. Then they knocked on the gate. The porter answered. Yes? I am here to see the abbot. The porter looked the two ragged men up and down with distaste. If it is food and shelter you want. Tell the Lord Abbot that Sir Richard of Wea is here to see him. Sir Richard? The porter stood in disbelief until Little John took a step closer to him. Come with me. Sir Richard followed the porter into the main hall. Moments later, inside the main hall, Sir Richard walked directly up to where the abbot was sitting and fell to his knees. Lord Abbot, I am here to keep my debt. Have you brought my money? Alas, I have not one penny upon my body. The abbot did not try to hide his smile. Then your castle, cattle, and land are all mine. Lord Abbot, please, I ask for a few more months. I've come across a lot of bad luck. The abbot slammed down his silver goblet so the wine splashed all over the table. Not even half a day more. Would you really strip a knight of everything he's ever owned and reduce him down to poverty? Sir Richard looked around the room pleadingly. His eyes rested on the sheriff. You are a man of law. Why won't you help me? I know this is no business of mine, but maybe I can help. Will you not ease his debt, Lord Abbot? Pay me 300 pounds, Sir Richard. I'll give you claim to your debt. You know, Lord Abbot, that it's as easy for me to pay 400 pounds as it is 300. Mm -hmm. Why will you not ease my debt? No, not another day. Will you do me no more? Enough. Either pay your debt now or lease your land and be gone from my hall. Sir Richard, who had been kneeling all the time, rose to his feet. Lord Abbot, you are a lying priest. Get out of my hole or I'll call my man. Let me go call mine. Sir Richard raised the horn to his lips and blew. Little John lumbered into the room carrying a large leather bag which he handed to Sir Richard. The knight turned it over and empty a pile of the gold money onto the table in front of the abbot. Remember, Lord Abbot, that you told me to pay you a quittance of 300 pounds. I will not pay you a penny more. The abbot's head drooped as his face sagged him as he watched Sir Richard count out 300 pounds. Now that I have paid, I will leave, and you will not get any more money from me. Before they left, Little John looked along at, hard at the sheriff and the abbot's men. Now I know your faces as well as your heart. I hope we meet again in Sherwood Forest. Fear filled the hall as Little John followed Sir Richard out of the abbey. But are you sure you won't take my gold? No, keep your money. You owe me nothing. I am the one who says Robin Hood is a good fellow.